Until fairly recently, the Headland Park was just a, a thing in itself. And though it physically connected into uh, Miller's Point, um, it didn't really connect in a social or uh, park way. And so what I'd like to do tonight is to show you what we have been working on with the city. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to get some feedback and to see where uh, it will help us go where we're going to go. As many of you know, um, Miller's Point was originally one of five headlands. You can see them there. And together with Goat Island, they formed this, er this part of the, uh, uh, of the harbor. And uh, it was a very special character part because these pieces fit together in a way that isn't repeated again anywhere else in the harbor. And this was also uh, the area of uh, Aborigines lived here. And it was a, a place that they knew and that we still know. And the only one of these that has been pretty much totally destroyed has been Miller's Point. So the first thing we were asked to do was to look at the possibility of reconnecting the water with Miller's Point so that you could come from the streets and the spaces that are up there and come all the way gently down to the waterfront and use the waterfront. And that's pretty much what the park does that uh, Phil just showed you. So the problem is, well, how do you go about this? And we started, there's been quite a lot of conversation about history and what part of history and what is important and all of this. But of course, if we're talking about the form of Miller's uh, point, you have to go back to at least the 1830s. Because since the 1830s, little by little by little, it's been beaten and bit away, and those pieces have first been used for real estate and then industry, quarrying, real estate, industry, and later trucks and, uh, and buses. So we tried to trace back what was the original form like. Now these red lines try to show the relationship between the headland when it was, uh, before it was developed, before it was uh, uh, industrialized. And you can see that in the upper, uh, in the upper one, it goes, fairly shallow toward the north, and as it moves to the south, it got quite steep. And the reason this red line doesn't exactly coincide with the cliff behind it is that this is about halfway out into the uh, headland. If you look the other way, you see that this uh, is pretty much even going across and coming back the other way. And so the headland would have to come from the water, go up to this height, connect back there, and then you would have at least the original form in, in crude form. Now, just a couple of things about the park in general. In some ways, the most important part of the park is the edge. It's the water's edge. And this is the most precious thing practically any, anywhere in uh, Sydney, but particularly here where we're recreating this. And, and from a point of view of a park, we thought it was tremendously important that that edge be designated as public. And it would be public all the way along. And this would uh, connect the areas along the wharves all through the park, pretty much at level at uh, the edge of the water, and then over to King's Wharf and then eventually down to Darling Harbor. So this, this connection was really important. And going the other way, you go past the wharves, and this is, this is Hickson Road coming through, that's where the tunnels are, and you come through here, and going around underneath the bridge and ending up at George Street. So there's a complete connection all the way from uh, Circular Quay all the way down to Darling Harbor. So we're part of a larger system, and we think that's really important. But we're also part of a system which goes from here back up to Miller's Point, because when you, run, when you recreate the one, you recreate both at the same time. One of the things that was important to us was to look at where the connections were that we could tie the park back into the city. We didn't want it to be separate from the city. And because of the cliff, and the cliff is still down here, it seems to be separated. And the cliff's roughly 60 feet high, 20 meters, and that's formidable. If, you know, even if, if you're going down the stairs, it's a long stair. If you're going up the stairs, it's a particularly long stair. So this connection was something we were worried about. 
If you get up on top of the new hill and you look down toward Moore's Wharf, this is what you would see. You would see this gentle lawn rolling down to the water's edge. And if you went down at the bottom, you would look up and you can see about the, the height of this. It's going to be a really big thing. I think people are going to be very surprised when they start filling in and doing all the things that they're going to do, how large and how impressive this is. It's not as large as the Botanic Garden, but it's still substantial. And for this side, it is important. Now, I know many people are concerned about changing their environment and changing their neighborhood. And I've dealt with a number of situations. Think, think of uh, Golden Gate Park in San Francisco and Central Park in New York. Those parks are regional in their orientation, maybe even national in their orientation. But for the people who live nearby, it's a neighborhood park. So we have tried to make this a park that would be good for people who are walking over and people who are walking their dog and going out with their kids and all of that. We've, we've tried to make that fairly seamless. And we've tried to make the park conducive to that in the same way that, let's say you live next to the Botanic Garden or you live near the Domain, you would be able to walk directly out and walk down to the water through the Botanic Garden. And it's that kind of experience, that sort of seamless experience. And I think most people would realize that if you lived behind the Botanic Garden or if you lived behind the Domain, that would be a really good place to live. And that would be a wonderful advantage uh, in, in the location in the city. So the places we're talking about tonight are three major entries. And I would point out that most of the people coming to the park, in fact, most of the people coming to the headland, will not be coming through Miller's Point or even Towns Place. They're, they're going to be coming down from the train station on the weekends, and they're going to be entering through Barangaroo South. And they're, some of them are going to be uh, coming across and getting down this way. But, the, but that's not to say that these three places are not really important. Here's the Hickson Road, here's Towns Place, Hickson Road coming around this way, and this is the Argyle Cut coming through, and of course this is Munns Reserve. Now historically this place has been kicked around. Since 1830, you know, all sorts of things hap have happened. I mean, it started off with farms, small farms, vegetables and so forth, a little bit of grain. Um, and then it started industrializing and being turned into real estate. And even the, the, head, the headland itself was divided into five or six different owners. And each one of them would quarry a little bit and quarry something else and something else would happen. So there was, it was no, no rhyme or reason. And the quarrying was all very small scale because this was early enough so they were moving things with horses. And they weren't moving things so much back toward the city, they were moving them down and putting them on boats and taking them away. That was the way they could do it. But when you got to the turn of the century, 1910, 1920, then you started getting trucks and things started moving much faster. And this place was torn apart much, much faster. And it seems almost as if the quarrying and then the port and then the container port happened you know, very, very quickly. And it must have been uh, very, very difficult during those periods to live on Miller's Point because stuff was always happening. Trucks were going by, dust was everywhere, uh, there were noise, and so forth. So it was a really difficult time, that 50 or 60 years. By the time we got to the Second World War, early 30s, uh, or late 30s, um, it had become Container Point and had changed its character entirely. And the thing about the Container Point, from my point of view, was that it was largely separate. It may be that only the people in Miller's Point actually saw it because they could look over the hill and see down into it. If people going along Hickson and even people going along the, the, the water side couldn't really see it, this whole area was separated. And one of the things that this park is going to do, in fact the development itself, is going to open that up and everybody is going to see it. Things that they really hardly knew were there uh, before and certainly facilities that weren't there are going to be here now. So just let's run through. This is about 1870. This is 1831. This is when it began. One of the things that was interesting, that first map I showed you, it wasn't a topographic map, it was a drawn map, and they were drawing the topo. topo. You, can, you can see it. They're drawing the lines that give you a sense that it's going down. And the archaeologists have told us an interesting thing, and that is that those were pretty accurate. The, the, the people who drew those things were pretty accurate. 
So anyway, we go through, and you get to 1880, you can see the beginning of the industrialization. Um, by 1949, uh, it, it had pretty much been all accomplished. Uh, Hickson Road had been taken through. The Argyle Cut, of course, was finished. And this area had begun uh, an area of what I would call modern urbanization. And on the right-hand side, you can see the result of that. And what this is, is almost everything up here is asphalt. And most of the small village character that was here was gone because the trucks and the buses, every time they couldn't get around a corner, they'd widen the road. And if they widened it a little bit more, there are lots of trees up here, but if they widened a little bit more, then the trees would go. So gradually, you got to the point where this was a pretty bare place wherever the buses and the trucks went. And in a sense, that's been our, when we started studying these connections, that's been something that we could work with because all of this pavement, and it's everywhere, on the top of the hill, bottom of the hill, all around, this pavement was so much more than was required, it gave us the beginnings of perhaps making a new scheme. And that was the land that we could make the scheme out of. Now on the left, on the blue, you can see what is pedestrian, bike, every kind of, of uh, non-automobile uh, activity is taken place in that blue. And I think the thing that you, you need to realize and look at that it's discontinuous. There are some wide parts, there are some narrow parts, there are some parts that, that aren't there at all. And you actually have to step out in the street if you're going to walk along. And of course, you come down the hill there, and the buses and the cars and the taxis come down there lickety-split. If you've ever tried to get a cab down here, if, and you're over here near the wharves, and you come over, you try to get across that street in, at nighttime, that's a pretty tough thing. And it's, uh, it's pretty much been given over. So the first thing we did was make an analysis of how much of that land we could take back and at the same time service all of the movements, the normal movements of automobiles, taxis, and delivery trucks, and so forth, the non-industrial movement, automobile movement. And look how much we were able to salvage. I mean, that's a lot of land, and, uh, and terribly important to, to Miller's point, and terribly important to the quality of life there. This is a map that shows in the, in the uh, yellow, it's showing what is there now, what is pedestrian accessible. And the brown or golden is showing the area that we figured we might be able to do something with. In all of Sydney, I think the average uh, pedestrian way to, uh, to automobile way is about 35% pedestrian. Excuse me, the other way around. 35% for automobiles. In Miller's Point, it's 45%. 25% more than the rest of the city. And you don't have that sense because there are really nice places like Munns Reserve and so forth, which give you an impression that it's a lot more gentle than it really is. But the percentages are, are pretty much described in this, in this map, and you can see it. Then we took all the areas, and, the, and you can see them here. These are historic curbs, the red. Uh, the walls are shown in, uh, in green. And we charted all those because we thought all of those were really important. And we wanted in one way or another not to remove that history, but to, but to maintain it. Uh, and you'll see and can judge how well we've done with that. Then we took the movement of bikes because bikes are becoming you know, a major movement. Automobiles used to run everything, and now we're getting to the point where bikes are much more important. And you can see here that in this area, the bikes are on either side of the street, almost having the same kind of rights as cars. In this area, uh, it, there's a lane uh, which is separated, more like downtown, where the, where the bikes are separated from the automobiles. And in this area, because this is a place where people are going to drop off cars and so forth, instead of giving the bikes, because this is coming down the hill, that's fast movement, instead of giving the bikes the free rein in here, we moved them back and mixed them with the pedestrians because we wanted to slow them down so that you would have, if, if you were being led off uh, by, you know, by taxi or being dropped off by a car or coming into the, uh, into the park in the park garage, you didn't want bikes to come by when you stepped out and they'd knock you down. So we definitely tried to slow this part down. And by doing that, we gave it back to the pedestrians. It became a little safer for pedestrians, which we didn't think was necessary perhaps up in here so much because we could move them out in the street. 
Now this is a composite of these three. I'm, I'm oversimplifying here. But this is a composite of these three, and I took this as our base. This is what we had to make something out of. And, and I think those encompass most of the major elements that we've been trying to save, except for trees. We're trying to save all the trees. Now, originally, as Phil said, the park pretty much ended. And it just sort of stopped here, and it stopped down here. Uh, and there really wasn't anything, a connection between them that had been thought out. You just walked out of the park, and you were in Miller's Point. Um, and then we talked to the city, and the city said, well, you know, it would be wonderful if we took a look at how we could make that a little more refined and how we could make that work a little smoother. And is there a possibility of doing that which would make Miller's Point a better neighborhood, but would also make the park more easily uh, accessed and try to get the optimization or the optimal balance of those two forces. And so this is what we've tried to do. This is Town's Place, and Town's Place, as I said, is going to be a major uh, automobile drop-off and a major uh, goal for getting into the parking uh, garage right here and then the pedestrian entrance here. It also includes the area of Moore's Wharf, uh, which is an interesting side of the park. Maybe on a future meeting we can talk about that. We were very interested in making the park visible stepping out and making you know that you were coming into a gracious and important park. We were also interested in trying to connect back to uh, Hickson Road, which is going to be a major boulevard. It's going to change in, in many ways, but it's going to be planted differently. It's eventually going to have a light rail. We're going to have stations along it. It's, it's going to have a lot of improvement. It's going to have improvement all the way around uh, to the rocks on the other side. So we thought it would be good to have a, a major pedestrian way coming and connecting up here so that you didn't have a sort of no man's land between the two. And so that was the, that was the major thrust of what we were trying to do. This is showing what the entrance to the park would look like. Here are these, these pillars are where you enter into the park. Uh, there's, a, there's a little wall that people can sit on. Uh, this is the entrance into the garage. And this is Klein Reserve up on the top. It's interesting because Klein Reserve is convex. And when you stand up there, you see the whole harbor. Munns Reserve is concave. And when you go in there, it's almost a little frightening. You're, you're, you feel like you're separate from the street. And the reason I've, we've been told that they moved the playground from Munns Reserve to Klein is because people didn't quite feel safe to have their kids in there. You couldn't see it from the street. There was really no one watching. And, and it, that industrial quality and going down in that service road made it just a little bit scary. And so this is something perhaps we can, we can help. This is looking the other way. This is the turnaround. There isn't any turnaround there, but this is where you would turn around and you would go into the park this way. And this is the little pump station house, which we're saving for a number of different uses. But that's the entrance into, and this is going into the garage. So this whole area could be made, I think, much more pedestrian and bicycle friendly and provide a stronger element to the park and also connect to the harbor uh, or along the wharves because more and more things are happening in those wharves, restaurants and theaters and housing. There's a lot of interesting things going. It's one of the most lively places of building in the city right now. And this is looking, this is the waterfront on this side. This is the Moore's Wharf where it drops down. And then this would be the pedestrian way moving along. There'd be parking in here. And this is over next to the wall uh, on the uphill side. Now, Munns Reserve's a little different. Um, and it offered, I think, different opportunities for us. This is the situation now. And the major feature, if you're on the outside, is this beautiful group of figs right here. And the next major feature is the bus turnaround, which is right here. So you have a really good thing you know, from a pedestrian and bicycle point of view, and you have a really bad thing, and they're right next to each other. The other thing, as I mentioned, is that this pretty much separates you when you get down in here, because there's a vertical curve up here. And if you're up in here, you can't really see what's happening down in there. The other thing that we, we saw is that this beautiful old hotel building, which is still being remodeled and so forth, seems to be holding its own, is separated from the park. And yet it's a beautiful backdrop for the park. But it doesn't have a, a connection. 
The other thing which we thought was very important is when you come through the Argyle Cut, when you get to the church, which is right here, this is the high point right here, you can see all the way to this point. But right now, all you see is that group of trees. Now, we're not going to chop any trees down. I mean, ficus are easy to move. We're going to use them all, and we'll, and we'll use them in the little park. But if you have these trees here, the park from way back here is invisible. So if you put something, a marker here, whatever it was, a fountain sculpture or whatever, you would be able to see the entrance of the park right after you came to the top of the hill by the church. And particularly if you got rid of that bus area in here, you could see a line all the way down and into the park. And we're not doing that so much to, to make the park take over the neighborhood. We're doing that to make the park and the neighborhood work well together. You don't want people wandering around, banging on the door and saying, where's the park? You know, you've got to have some kind of orientation. And this is down at Hickson Road. This is below. So all of this is happening up in the neighborhood. And we always stay over in the rocks. And one of my favorite walks, we come over the, to Kent Street, you know, and, and come along here every morning. And I really enjoy it. And sometimes we walk down here and look out and, and walk over to Klein and look out. Those are really pleasant places to be and pleasant things to do. Now, here we are at the high point. And you'd never know that something was down there. But that's the beginning of Munn's Reserve. It seems very close. And again, if you would just change that character a little bit, make it say park instead of say, you know, just tree, we could, you know, that would be a very interesting thing. And then this road would take on a kind of dignity. Now, you have to remove the buses, too, to do that. And I think that would make the neighborhood a lot more interesting and a lot more beautiful. What's happened is that these, these roads have widened and widened and widened. Cut, this little park has been sort of cut off. I'm sure it was bigger. I'm sure this was a narrower road at one time. Now, here we are at the uh, just about entering into uh, Munn's Reserve. And Munn's Reserve is a, is, is a little bit schizophrenic. You can go this way when you're up high, and then it drops down about uh, 10 feet or so, three or four meters. Or you can go this way and come into the back of this industrial building. But the thing you're most conscious of is this no man's land of paving. And it's everywhere. So we said, how much can we get? We can get this back. This Munn's Reserve could be made, made larger by this amount without changing access points, without changing the movement of, of cars or buses and so forth. And, the, and Munn's Reserve could then start incorporating the hotel and even this building could be put in, and Munn's Reserve could be twice that size and a much nicer park and a much more graceful uh, transition from one grade to the other. And here it is, you know, it's a, it is a nice little park, but it was sort of uh, half built, and it was supposed to have a playground which was never built, and so it wasn't quite finished. And this industrial area was never quite turned into a park. It's, they still back trucks down in here, which are right in the park, and, and I think a lot of this isn't so much changing its character, but it's rearranging things in such a way that it could be a better place and be more useful. So this is what we would end up with, the, with this coming out further. It's now back in here. And then this could be part of the park, and eventually the bond, I think, could be part of the park. Not just uh, the larger park over here, but Munn's Reserve itself. And this is what we were trying to do, is try to make a graceful movement from this upper level down to the lower level, something that would be pleasant to be in. And, and the functions would stay pretty much the same, but the character uh, would be much more elegant and, and beautiful. And this is the, they're redoing the hotel now. It's really quite a beautiful elevation, and we'd like to bring the park up a little bit, save the, the historic wall, the heritage wall, and bring both of those things together. And this is the way we think it might look, particularly when this building is brought into the park. We hope in some days in the future, it's already owned publicly and it's got a long lease in it, but we would hope someday it would become part of the park and participate in the, in the, the liveliness of the park. Now, the, now the, the Headlands Park on this side is essentially a, uh, a native planting. We're going to build a bush, and it's a very accurate building, and it's going to have a lot of botanic interest. It's going to have a lot of things about it that are very interesting. 
So what we're trying to do is take the materials of the neighborhood and bring them in, and take the materials of the park and bring them out so they blend together. So it's fairly seamless, one, to the, one side to the other. And yet this will be an area in the park which is quiet, whereas a lot of the park is very big and open, this will be kind of intimate and pretty much the way Munns Reserve is now, the same feeling. Now, uh, Daggetti is a little bit different. You can see the hotel up here, and you can see this wall, beautiful wall that comes down. But you can also see that the, that the sidewalk has been you know, narrowed and narrowed as the street has been widened and widened, and at some place the trees have been taken out, there were trees in here originally, uh, and the sidewalk has become, gotten to the point where you really have to step into the street. You can't walk all the way down there. But this is so wide that we think we can get that space back, get the trees back, and plant trees in such a way against the wall where you have shadows on the wall, and where it actually features it in a, in a nicer way uh, than it is right now. And of course, bikes can come down in the street. The street is very wide. We can accommodate almost everything coming down the hill and separate out those things, which would be one thing dangerous to another. And you can see how it works. This is coming down the hill here. This would be widened out. This is where it was so narrow right in here. That's the wall. It was right up against the wall there. And we can get a wider sidewalk, which is a very beautiful walk. It's, there's a beautiful walk here and a stair. There's a beautiful walk on the back side into the Klein Reserve. And this would also be a beautiful walk. And I think that would, you know, if, if you're one of those people who likes to, to jog or likes to walk, this will be a nice place to, to do that. So these are all the three put together. And I think we'll, we'll probably have many more trees than are there now, but we will save all the trees that are there and put the trees in in appropriate ways. And that's our, that's our, our vision for this thing. And we're really interested in what you'll tell us you think about them. Thank you. <laughs>